Hi everyone, I'm Tom Stevenson and this is the end of our course. Uh, I thought I'd wrap things up and give a little bit of perspective on everything that we've kind of covered. And I also uh, try to give you a heads up on the things that you need to uh, review and look at uh, for the final test. Uh, so with regards to the things that I think you need to look at, I've kind of um, got uh, a couple of things uh, open here, so let's see. Uh, we have our, so in this particular course, um, I've had a, a number of video lectures, as you know, and I'm going to say that the emphasis is going to be on the final test is going to be from about uh, lecture 8, a through 12B, um, a little bit on lecture seven perhaps because lecture seven kind of um, overlaps with uh, labor uh, productivity. And so if we actually look at the textbook, uh, what those lectures were based on, uh, a good portion of them were based on uh, chapter eight, labor uh, relations and control, which got into labor productivity. And if you recall, we looked at uh, how can we be uh, more mindful of uh, productivity rates and time for um, labor that it's actually doing things, because that's a waste if there's delays or if, if work is waiting for workers or workers are waiting for work, um, that's not very good in construction. So. I would definitely say that you should review that. Re Lecture 8A is on safety. Uh, there will be a, perhaps a little bit on safety, but not a huge amount, so keep that in mind. I know you've done a safety course uh, previous to this, uh, but there could be a few questions for sure. Uh, lecture Chapter 10 was on uh, subcontracting and purchasing, and so that was Lecture 8B. Uh, in the video lectures, so definitely, definitely um, a fair bit of material can be from there. And then we kind of got into lecture 11 and 12, which are both uh, very important parts of construction management. We talked about that from the beginning of the course. We talked about goal setting, we talked about systems and system integration, and really it tied to the major constraints of time, cost, quality. Well, each one of those lectures dives into those areas. You know, what's quality assurance? What's quality control? How does quality impact time? How does it impact cost? So all these things were coming up through those lectures. So very definitely because it's fluid through the whole construction process, very important areas. And so again, you can review those lectures, those video lectures, the chapters in the book, and get a good strong sense of that. The nice thing about doing an online course, you know, if you miss the class, you kind of like are done. You still got the opportunity to go back and review these things. So um, there's still hope for those of you that are a little bit behind in that area. And those that have been coming every week to the live lectures and have been keeping up with the video lectures, you're in a very strong position right now. Uh, and that's the way it goes. We talked about proactive management and reactive management. So those that have been kind of doing things all the way along, you're in proactive mode. Those that are feeling stressed right now, you put yourself into a reactive mode. Happens in the real world of management too, but hopefully we can stop, reflect, and learn from that so that we put ourselves in those positions less in the future. Trust me, I've put myself in those positions a number of times too. It doesn't mean it's too late, just get at it. Uh, Chapter uh, 13, and that would be in le uh, corresponding with um, nine, lecture 9C, Waste Commissioning and Lead. Um, so commissioning and lead, probably a little bit more on the test. Uh, not probably, I don't think I've got too much that I'll probably put on the waste side of things, but still anything is possible in that area, but I wouldn't be spending hours and hours on that particular part. You should understand what the commissioning process is. When there's good timing to do the commissioning, always start early, as early as you can, dependent on the contract type. You can't start uh, the planning of the commissioning process if you're in a design bid build contract till after the design is done. But if you're in a design build, you could be doing it before the design is done. So there, there's different states of where you can start, but the key framework for commissioning is start early. Start early, and this again ties to some of the contract uh, discussions we had in the earlier chapters. That's why 
when I say 20%, 80%, well, there's stuff from the first part you kind of got to know to understand the part from the second. And there's all these little nodes and networks that interconnect that I'll show you in a few minutes. Because I'm going to try to conceptualize that a little bit better for everybody. Chapters 14, 15, and that would correspond um, with our uh, lecture uh, 10B. Uh, we kind of got into, and 10A, we got into productivity tools, productivity software. Uh, we did a little bit of a, a video clip. I think it was Procore that we used as the example, but really um, how uh, different uh, productivity tools and systems can help us improve what we do. And so again, that tied to goals and systems that we discussed in the earlier part. And then this was looking at uh, more how these tools can be utilized. And I think in my uh, live lectures and in my tape lecture, so if you missed the live lecture, you, didn't, you can watch the video lecture, should be adequate in that area on MS uh, Project. I used as an example to try to demonstrate how we can help uh, monitor uh, schedules and productivity rates and what the plan is and compare that to the actuals. And you'll be learning a lot more about that next semester when you do project management, planning and scheduling. But there's direct connections and there's a lot of things that directly connect between the courses. You're in second year now and I really feel that this is the point where you gotta start trying to connect the dots. Like we're doing this here, we're doing this here. How does all of this fit together? I don't quite get it, uh, but that's what we're gonna try that's what we've been trying to do all semester that's what next semester is going to help with and that's what i'm going to try to explain right after i get um, through these chapters uh review um chapter 17 and chapter uh chapter 17 and 18 that corresponded with lectures 12a and 12b um sov schedule of values uh progress payments cash flow it's a really big deal in construction we went over that aspect in the live lectures. We studied the case study. I've got the case study loaded under lectures in Blackboard if you missed it. Uh, and you can review that to get a sense of what cash flow is all about. So we did that kind of in groups. But for sure in the video lecture, I explained it and I showed how a software program, going back to uh, the uh, lectures um, 10B and 10A, how that ties to um, the system software that we use. If we enter the data, we can mine it for information like when money's going to be going out of a project and compare it to what we've negotiated in our schedule of values for when money is going to come in. And so that is um, the video lectures 12A and 12B. 12B was closeout. And in one of the live lectures, we did another case on the aspect of continuous improvement and project review. And in the video lecture, I kind of go through all the sort of different elements of closeout, as does it go through that in chapter 16 for you in the textbook. So that those are fair game for the test as well. Lectures 11A and 11B, which I must have missed over here, we get into chapter 16 in the book, which is change orders. Of course, I kind of put my spin on it as I do with everything because there is some nuanced difference and everybody's got their different views on it. Uh, definitely with change orders, a lot of people think that contractors make a fortune with them and it's very easy to lose a fortune with them if you don't do things right. So there was a lot of elements, what's involved in a change order, what you need to put into a contract regarding change orders and uh, how that should spell that information out. So for example, if you have a change order, and you're, you're doing a, a, a sign off on a change order, it should be adding to the current contract price. So when you're done, if the change order is $10,000 and the contract's 100, it should say current contract 100,000, change order 10,000, revised contract amount 110. So it should show it completely added up in there. That's one of the things that um, is required for it to really sort of hold up in a, from a legal perspective. As well, being able to detail it out and sell it and negotiate it. That goes back to the earlier part too. How do you do that? Well, you do a really good takeoff. You show how this is going to uh, be done step by step. You indicate it and insert it into a schedule and see how it impacts the schedule. These are all part and parcel of what you have to do 
when developing change orders. And a claim is just an unsettled, sorry, a, a claim is just an unsettled uh, a change, a t change order. So we, a claim is something that we haven't signed off on. We have not, um, the client has not signed off on it. Once they sign off on it as a change, then it's a change order and then we're ready to go. And so we always wanna to try to get as many of those cleared up as soon as possible. You don't wanna leave a big pile of changes to the end of the project because the old saying goes, uh, he or she who has the goal, he or, she, he or she who has the gold makes the rules, the golden rule, the other golden rule. The, the real golden rule is treat others as you would want them to treat you. But there's kind of that other one that sticks out there. So that's um, that part of it. I'm trying to have a little fun here with this. Okay, so that would be the main elements of things that I would be looking at um, preparing myself for. Again, if, you if you're behind on that, I would definitely be going through the video lectures to try to catch yourself up on that. So you're just feeling confident and you know where, where to find materials. It is an open book um, test, obviously, from that perspective. Uh, but there are time constraints on that. You'll have the two hours to do um, the test, uh, but that's the constraint that you're working with him. So I, on uh, Monday, I guess I was uh, asking that class, I think I had it from two to four, and I was asking the question, so feedback, uh, you know, how's it going? And uh, uh, how did the course, because it's online and I haven't done online before. And one of the students um, said, uh, well, I'll give you feedback. I have no problem giving you feedback. Every time I open a, a video file um, or open the textbook, I feel like another bomb has gone off. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, okay. And uh, he actually had some pretty good points. Uh, so it was like he couldn't see where everything fit together or how it fit together. Uh, there just seems to be a lot of things and it's not really clear how things fit together. So I, I, I left that and I kind of started thinking about that. And it's funny, I had a meeting uh, with Mechanical Contractors Association, who I'm doing a little bit of uh, work with. And um, they were telling me, yeah, we have new people, and um, very often they don't necessarily see everything, how it all fits together. And so uh, the student from Monday um, had a very valid point, but people in industry, when they're in very specialized industry sectors, they don't necessarily see the whole picture. And you know what? I think it's important that you get an understanding of the whole picture. I think it's um, helpful if you can do that. And I mean, if professionals in industry are wanting their people to get a, a better vision of it, I think it's incumbent upon me to try to make sure that you have a pretty good vision on it. And so I thought, well, maybe uh, that the next day I started thinking, well, maybe I could make a, what we call a mind map. And mind map is a tool that you can use in, to um, better clarify processes and procedures and to get a, a sort of a mental model of how things flow in whatever, in a process. You know, it could be in an assembly line in a manufacturing plant. How does something go in one end and come out the other end? What are all the steps that are involved in the process? And it's a way of trying to put it in a more graphical form that people could maybe visualize a little bit better or connect with than just you know writing sentences and explaining it that way. Um, so I thought, all right, well, maybe I could do a mind map for um, site and project management and how it connects with all the things that we've been talking about in the course. Now, we haven't talked about everything in the course, uh, so I might have a little few, a few extra things, but it definitely will um, give you a, a good idea if you've been having a little bit of difficulty connecting um, the dots. And these kind of tools, and I've, I've mentioned a number of tools throughout the course, things like checklists, things like Pareto's, uh, the Pareto principle, the 2080 rule. Um, so I've had a, a series of different tools that I've uh, explained. This is just another one. And I would look to um, the opportunity in your future to pick up on uh, these different tools that you can use in management positions. Uh, things like even, you know, I'm getting into this issue with this person. I'm going to use the tool of I'm going to look at, look at it from their perspective. So when we talked about how to win friends and influence people, how to put yourself in the other person's shoes, it's a tool that you can use um, when you're actually in the field and trying to resolve and figure out problems. 
So the mind map that I put together, I, I guess the last couple of days is, well, we've kind of got this site management, project management team. So we've got this team that you will more than likely end up working in, um, unless you go on the estimating side. And then I've got another uh, point that'll come up uh, a little bit later, uh, but this is most likely where a lot of you will end up. Those in the estimating, you'll come in a little bit earlier. Um, and then we have these real three areas of work. And we've talked about them uh, during this course, right? Pre-construction, construction, and closeout. Pre-construction is everything before we start putting boots on the ground and doing stuff. That's in the preparation of uh, getting ready to start the project. This is the actual doing of the project, and this is finalizing the project, right? And it's going to flow in this direction. It's going to flow through here, through there, through there. So there's a definite flow to it. Um, so that's uh, for sure. We don't start at closeout. We finish at closeout. Now, we might want to start planning the closeout for sure in the pre-construction stage so that we can do as much as we can to make this process as easy as we can. And we also talked about, um, well, once, once you get into the project, then you're going to, this is what your job is. You're going to be involved in this. You're going to be involved in that. You're going to be heavily involved in this. And you know what? You need a certain amount of soft skills that are involved in this and, you know, leadership skills, how to manage people effectively. Um, you got to have vision. You got to see where you want to take things. And we talked about goal setting and looking to starting with the end in mind. We've got to have those skills built up. And there's a lot to this particular area. And you have to be transparent and you have to learn how to engage people and communicate with people. And that was the one other thing I think I didn't say in the review. Make sure you do the lean videos because that was also integrating a lot of change and new processes that's being widely adopted in the construction industry too. That was um, lecture 11C. Um, as you'll see, it comes up through here. Relationships. We've got to be able to, as I said, engage people, know what we're doing, be very clear about it, be very transparent, get clarifications, hold accountabilities, uh, be able to negotiate uh, and uh, uh, ensure that certain things are clarified and agreed to and commitment. So those are very important things. And ethics. You know, in the construction industry, we need to operate in a ethical manner. We need to take the long game approach, right? We shouldn't be um, doing things that are unethical or illegal or not moral uh, from a point of view of safety, from a point of view of how we operate. So these are all important sort of functions of what we should be thinking about as a site management team. And I, hopefully what your company that you end up working for is thinking about. So then we get into the nuts and bolts. And the nuts and bolts involves in pre-construction, there's all these things that we've got to start thinking about and developing on. So there's things like our goals and systems that we're going to use, how we're going to mobilize the site. Schedule of values, well, that came, topic came up in closeout, but we don't develop the schedule of value. Uh, it came up just before closeout. We don't develop it that late. We develop it early on. That's the list of uh, breakdown of our costings so that then we can do our progress billings and account for that. Our document process setup. That's why we talked about all the different documents in the course, like RFIs and submittals. Our permits. Well, they take time. They could be a long lead item. We've got to make sure that we're going after them very early on and that we've secured the right ones. Setting up our procurements. Well, we want to sign on our contractors, our subcontractors. So that's why we spend so much time talking about that. Our baseline schedule, the plan, what's the, how do we plan to organize things? And so basically breaking it down into activities, putting the logic and sequence of work into. Lots of meetings, pre-award meetings before we award the contract, pre-construction, we spent a lot of time talking about those. The baseline budget, the safety plan, these are the early elements of things that we need to do. And this comes up in the cost uh, portion of uh, the chapters that we talked about and lecture 9b, uh, the video lecture. Quality assurance, well, that's the program that we're going to use, so we got to figure out how we're going to use that program, instituting it in this pre-construction process. 
The test and commissioning, start early so you can finish well. Identifying long lead items, things that are gonna take a long time to order. What methodology of construction are we going to use? Forming systems, etc. How are we going to be setting up and laying out the site, site logistics? You know, in your labs, you discussed a lot of this. We discussed it in some of the earlier lectures. Um, so these are just, that's just pre-construction, right? And we've got to do these things well. And you know what? There's more. I don't have every single element there, but it gives you an idea of the nodes and the things that we have to think about in this grouping of work. And that's really what our job is here. So yes, it is like little tiny bombs going off. It's these things that, especially if we don't take care of them, I think he used a very good analogy when he said that, because there are these things that um, will explode on you if you really haven't addressed them in construction. That's the way of being proactive as opposed to reactive. So we talked about that in the course as well. So if we've done our, our due diligence in this part, then we're moving on to construction, right? And you know what? Things don't go the way we planned. We, we know we had a baseline schedule, but things change and we have to do updates and we have to monitor it and we have to compare how we are and we have to adjust it. We have to look at productivity rates. Are we doing things as expected? Are things taking longer? Why are they taking longer? Can we adjust and recuperate that? We have inspections to ensure that the work is being done. Regulatory authorities are doing inspections. The progress billings, well, we developed the schedule value and we're spending money, so we should be billing correspondingly for that. Well, we've developed our quality assurance program, so there's our quality control. Now we're inspecting to make sure that the quality insurance program is actually working. Safety setup and inspections. Well, we developed a safety program early on and we're making sure that we're implementing it and that we're meeting those requirements and operating a safe site that fits in with our moral expectations as a business, a company, owners, and people in general. Commissioning. Well, whatever we can do early, we want to make sure that we're doing it. We don't want to pile of stuff at the end, right? Waste management. Managing the waste, separating if it's a lead project, documenting it, making sure that we have everything in place. Our short-term planning meetings with all the trades to execute on the work because we can get more detail when work is closer to us than when it's farther away. Um, I think I got progress billings twice. See, I rushed it a little bit. Uh, site logistics, execution. And adjustments, because site logistics can change by the faces of phases of work. So just because we've set the site up a certain way at the beginning, we might have to move the trailers to another location so we can pave the parking lot, or we might get rid of the trailers and move inside temporarily. The trade partners and suppliers that we're working with, basically the supply chain for the project and the integration of them into the work. That's one little bubble, but it's a huge one that I could blow up as to another bubble with all the interconnections that go on in there. And of course, the, a lot of these interconnect with each other. Change orders, claim management, making sure that we are updating our um, schedules to include the changes and the impact that the changes are going to have on the projects making sure that we get signed off on and that whatever we're doing gets represented in the progress billing, billings. Lean thinking, thinking from a lean perspective. We talked about the eight areas of waste. If it's a real lean project, there'll be a whole pile of different things that you'll be um, doing in that area. So that ties to that lecture I was talking about, lecture video lecture 11C that we um, uh, went through. And there'll definitely be questions on the test in that area as well. So um, keep that in mind. And so that's giving you the sort of the whole actually executing and building and constructing. And these are all these little nodes of things that we've been learning during this um, semester in this site management course. Well, if we've been getting that done, well, guess what? Now onward and upward, we're at the closeout stage. And so then we're looking at things like final payment. We want to bet, get everything done so we can get our final payment. In order to do that, though, we have to reach substantial completion. And we have, in order to reach substantial completion, we have to have occupancy. Occupancy means that the building department is certified that the building's safe to use. Substantial completion means the building can be used for its intended purpose. 
a little bit different. This is for safety. This means you could actually use it for its intended purpose. So you could have a college building that could really be used for its, in, uh, that's really deemed to be safe, but maybe it doesn't have all the bolt down tables and chairs and everything. So you can't really use it as a classroom yet. So it wouldn't be at substantial completion. Uh, punch list, all the deficiencies. And what you wanna do through this process of construction is have as few deficiencies as possible so that when you get here, it's easier to get through them. Um, the operation manuals uh, and spare parts have to be um, provided. Uh, project review, you wanna go over what did you do well? What did you not do so, so well? What could you improve on? What best practices do you wanna impl implement across the organization? You have to train facilities managers on the takeover of the building. Somebody has to know how to operate everything. You don't just throw them the key and say, good luck with that. Um, so there's a training requirement. You have to turn over according to what the contract documents ask is all the as built documents. And going back to um, where we were in the construction process and in the pre-construction, what does our contract say that we're providing? Are we providing like a BIM 6D documentation where it is basically a database of the whole project? Or are we just doing kind of a normal kind of um, turnover of documents? It, there can be quite a lot of differences within the contract. Uh, if it's LEED certification, we've got to make sure we pulled all our documentation that we satisfy that those requirements. So that planning should really take place early so that when we get here, it's easier to do. So all of these things kind of interconnect. So just going back again, just to quickly, you got the site team, you've got the project that you're going to do. You're going to kind of go through this process from pre-construction to construction to close out. The site team is integral to the part, the success and coordination and facilitation of this. You have certain fundamental skill sets that you need to build upon to strengthen your ability to perform in these areas. You're going to start at pre-construction and you're going to plan a number of things out and get set up for it. You're going to move on to construction where you're actually boots on the ground and doing the work and monitoring the work. And project management is all about iterations, course corrections, course corrections. It's not a perfectly straight alignment. Even planes that fly on autopilot, they're always self-correcting their course as they go along. You do the same thing in project management. That's the way project management works. And then, of course, all the closeout items that I um, mentioned. And even still, there's further things that I didn't mention, such as basically this arrow leading to the design. Maybe it's a design build. So there would have been another node back here that would have been involved in the design process. Maybe it is a P3 project and you would be heavily in design and you would be heavily in building um, the project team early on from even before pre-construction. So different models for different projects depending on the contract type. And then there's post-construction. There's basically after the facility is built and what is done after um, the client has moved in. So there's that overall picture really at heart um, in this particular course. I think if you're sort of getting an idea of this, I know it looks like a, a lot, but individually, it's not that bad. So individually, um, the more you learn about things individually, the better you are. But the expectation is not that you are totally know all knowing of each area in your career, you're going to be doing certain functions in your job. And it'll be important for you to understand how really become good at those functions, but not everything. This does not mean you know everything inside and out, but you do have to know what you don't know. And that means then I don't know too much about this. I don't know too much about the commissioning process. Oh, but this, our company has a, uh, M&E coordinator who is handling that. So we can have discussions to see how this is going to fit into the context of what I'm doing, which is working on the baseline schedule. So I need to talk to that M&E coordinator and get their inputs to help fill out the baseline schedule that we're developing. So you have to know how to fill the voids. You don't have to know everything. Look, I've been doing this for decades. 
I'll be the first to tell you, I don't know everything. There is so much I don't know. And every year I feel like there's more that I, I learned that I don't know. Um, but that's the way it is. Construction is expanding. The area of knowledge is expanding. I think you got a real problem if you end up with a boss or somebody that thinks they know everything. That's more problematic because nobody does. And if they think they do, that's a problem. So relax a little bit about it, but try to over the next semester or, uh, or three, depending on your program, Take it in and start thinking, how does this fit in here? How does this fit in there? How does that fit in this? And, oh, what's missing from here? Oh, yeah, there, should be a, there could be another node here. That would make a lot of sense. Or another five nodes that would connect to this or ten nodes that would connect to that. And you start to sort of get it into your mind how things work together. And I hope that this course has kind of given you that sort of overview of how things um, start to fit together. And even if it's just starting to kind of crystallize now, that's okay. That's okay. We're on a journey here. And I think, you you know, if you've been, you know yourself the type of effort you put in this semester. Some of you know you put an immense amount of effort into the semester. And some of you know life gets in the way. This has been a tough year for everybody, so I completely understand that. Good thing is, it is recorded, so even after the semester, if you're feeling that you missed some stuff and you just like to clarify things, you can always go back. I'm leaving them on YouTube. You can always go back and um, catch up. And, or in your another course, it's like, I remember this. Maybe I should refresh on this. So at least it's not disappearing like things tend to disappear on Blackboard that way. So just wanted to say that. Prepare yourself well for the test. I wish everybody uh, the very, very best, and it's been a great semester. So. Um, thanks again, and thanks for your participation in the um, live lectures, and wish you all the best. Tom Stevenson saying goodbye for now, and we'll see you again. Bye-bye.